tell y'all the last Sunday, then if I got time for the last Sunday. <laughs> But God is good. God is faithful and God is kind. I just want to thank him for this day that he has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I have our announcements. Uh, 10 o'clock uh, this morning, we had Sunday school. At 11 o'clock, we'll have service. Sunday morning worship. Usher board meeting immediately after morning worship. Monday, September the 13th at 6.15, the men's ministry meeting. Wednesday, September 15th at 7 p.m., Bible study in person or virtual. Thursday, September the 16th at 6.30, the Justice Ministry meeting will be here. And Wednesday, September the 22nd at 6 p.m., Pastor Prayer Ministry meeting, electing new office. Uh, don't forget the pledge for growth as we're asking for $10 above your tithes each month for an entire year. Now, Four ways to give. I like how I do it. You can mail in your tithes at 330 Chestnut Street, Lexington, Kentucky, 40508. You can use PayPal. That's at GLBC Finance Team at gmail.com or Cash App, dollar sign 330 for a BC. And you can also pay your tithes in person here at the church. There's a bucket in the back where you can do your tithes. And just if you're, you're not with coming in yet, you can always come in the back door and do your tithes. Now, on behalf of our pastor, Elder Marcus D. Underwood, I would like to welcome our visitors into this place. Maybe a prayer will be prayed or a song will be sung that can help you along your Christian race. And I pray everybody has a good week. Thank you. Amen.
for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. Be sure that all who are enraged against you will be ashamed and disgraced. Those who contend with you will become as nothing and will perish. You will look for those who contend with you, but you will not find them. Those who war against you will become absolutely nothing. For I am the Lord your God, who holds your right hand, who says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. This day you let me be a part of it. Father, and I say thank you. Heavenly Father, we come here with one purpose and one purpose only. Heavenly Father, that is to lift your holy name, to give you all the praise and all the glory, and just thank you for everything that you do for us. This is a day that we do not take for granted, Father, because we know some are not a part of this day today. For us to be here, we do say thank you. Heavenly Father, we pray for those that have lost loved ones. Heavenly Father, those that have loved ones in the hospital right now, fighting for their lives. We ask that you would please touch them. Please lift them, Father, and let them know they are not alone. Heavenly Father, we pray for everyone here under the sound of my voice. We ask that you would strengthen us individually and collectively so that we may continue to praise your name and give you all the glory, Father. Father, we pray for the kids out here in the world today. Heavenly Father, God, yes. Senseless violence, just senseless, Heavenly Father. We ask that you would please just touch them. Touch the parents of the kids, Heavenly Father, that are out here in the world just doing whatever they want to do. They knew you were a part of their sins, Heavenly Father. Just please be with them, Father. Heavenly Father, I want to pray for our pastor. Pray that you would continue to keep him. Bless him and his family. We're so thankful for him, Heavenly Father, for his obedience his dedication and for his willingness to serve. In the pandemic, before the pandemic, he's been true. And we want to continue to lift him, continue to praise him, touch him, so he may continue to feed us. Heavenly Father, we ask you to forgive us for all of our shortcomings, for all of our sins, because there are many. Heavenly Father, we pray that you continue to bless the less fortunate. We look good today, Heavenly Father, but tomorrow isn't too far away. We don't want to take anything for granted that you do for us. So we just simply say thank you. And Father, we pray that you would join us in this service this morning. Be with us, be all about us, and be all in our past, Heavenly Father, as he brings your word. We'll continue to give you the praise and glory. These things I say in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. In Psalms 34, mm -hmm. David opens up by decreeing and declaring that no matter what the problem, no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, that he will bless the Lord no matter what comes. After he makes that declaration, he then extends a two-part invitation. The first part is to fellow believers. I need you to join in with me in magnifying the name of the Lord. The scripture says, no magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Another word for this word magnify is exaggerate. Yeah. And when you exaggerate something, you are making that something or someone better than what they really are. So is there anybody here who don't mind exaggerating, magnifying the name of the Lord? He's been too good. He's been too bad. Is there anybody here that don't mind? Magnifying the name of the Lord. Part two of the invitation is to the same believer. Come on, come on. After you 
join in with me. I need you to experience God for yourself. The scripture says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I don't know about you, but I tried it. At the age of nine years old, and I found him to be very good. As a matter of fact, he's been more than good. He's been better than me than I could be to myself. And now, since I'm the age of 34, I can say for myself that every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before.
I got some problems. I got some issues. And I get it all wrong. God is still faithful. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 3. We have the scripture reads, For we which have believed do enter into rest. Amen. a few moments about the believer's rest. All right. The believer's rest. I got a question that I want to ask the non-Christian believer to the reprobate. You just happen to be listening to me today. Somehow this message hits your feet. My question to you is, are you tired yet? <laughs> are, are you tired yet? I, this life, this world, is a broken, fallen place. A fall in, in all of its beauty, in all of its splendor, in everything that it offers, life, this world is a falling place. It's hard. There's a hardness with living in this life. And the hardness is because of its fallen condition. Fallen man has resisted.
result of his fallen soil, fallen animal. You know, it didn't even rain on her until the fall. There was no need for it. Beloved, I say that to help us to realize it's rough down here. And there is a wearisome, a weariness that comes with living in this life. And, and I'm reminded of the invitation that Christ gave in Matthew 11 when he said, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. And he said, I will give you some rest. He then went on to say, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I think we miss what Christ meant when he said, I will give you rest. I think we misunderstood. Because, you know, we, we, we oftentimes, you know, when someone passes on, uh, folk engrave it on their tombstone, rest in peace. Rest in peace. And, and surely, you know, truly there is a rest to look forward to for our flesh. And, uh, some things to realize on the other side, but but what about right now? Is there no rest for the weary in this life? I, I, you know, we we talk about heaven. Everybody want to go to heaven. I I ain't for wait until I get there. I'm not I'm not for wait until I get there. I'm looking forward to it because that's holy. What I shall be. Yes. And I will receive my full reward. Yeah. However, hey. I'm an heir yeah. right now. Yeah. And even though I have not fully uh, inherited my full inheritance <laughs> as a son of the king, yeah. <laughs> surely there are some pleasures. Yeah. And some good things of being a child of the king that I can relish and take advantage of right now. Are y'all with me? I'm preaching good already. Yes, sir. It's too much in this life. It's too much to deal with. It's too much disappointment. It's too much hurt. It's too much scrounging and scraping and crawling to go through it without some peace and some rest. Now I know the scripture says man will eat by the sweat of his brow. How can one find some, some rest under those stipulations? You must till the ground. You must work. There will be suffering. There will be labor. But my question to you is, is where does the true weariness lie? Does the weariness lie from going to work every day? 
Or does the weariness come from the heaviness of ensuring there's food on the table? We care for our children and we, we raise our children the best we can. But our heaviness is ensuring their safety yeah. and their well-being. That's where the heaviness is. Beloved, the heaviness when it comes to our soul is not what to do to get there. It's how we get there. Yeah. Yeah. Beloved Christ, when he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, he told us exactly what the rest was for. He didn't say it was rest from tilling the ground. He didn't say it was rest from plowing, laboring in the field. He didn't say it was rest from serving in the temple of God, in the house of God, serving in your family. He said that it was rest for your soul, your mind, your total being, rest for your conscience. I want you to think about how many, because really it ain't just non-believers, but also Christian believers. There are many Christian believers sitting in pews across this globe this morning who are still stuck with the heaviness of the unsurety of where they're going when they leave here. <laughs> Beloved, that's not rest. That's not liberty in Christ Jesus. Where is the freedom in that? Where is the, the rest in that? Where is the assurance in that? If I'm still unsure about where I'm going, when I leave, did I do enough? Ain't that the question? Did I do enough? Did I pray enough? Did I serve enough? Did I go to church enough? Did I use my gifts the right way? Did I give enough? Did, did I do this hard too long? Because I, I was in the streets for a long time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Has all the good I've done made up for all the bad? That's heaven. That's heavy. I, 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 I don't want that kind of weight. No. I, I don't want that kind of weight. I don't want to live under that kind of weight. I don't want that much pressure. I, I might not be able to sleep at night. Why? Because I know he's in me. And when I look at me, and I look at this holy God, who I do not fit the bill. And that makes my soul weary. Because the truth of the matter is, nobody wants eternity in suffering. Nobody really wants it. If anybody truly believes in a heaven and a hell, nobody wants the latter. Nobody wants the latter. And so what they do is they're now trying to find out how do I get to the heaven? What do I have to do? What all do I got to do to get to the heaven? Beloved, I come to serve somebody noticed this morning that there is a way to enter into some rest right now. We don't have to wait until we take our final breath Amen. to experience 
rest. Matter of fact, I would declare that if you don't experience rest in this life, you won't experience none in the after life. <laughs> you talking about some rest and peace. If you don't get some rest now, if, if, you, know, if you don't enter into your rest right now, ain't no rest for you later on. Beloved, the good thing that I, I find in the text, and I actually see it in verse 1, he says that it was a promise being left us of entering into his rest. In other words, it ain't our rest. The thing is, if you try to get to a point where you can enter into or achieve your own rest, you're going to be laboring for a long time. But in this Christianity thing, there is a rest that's already been accomplished. You know, there was two times in Scripture that I want to point out where it said that God rested. In creation, he created for six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. And Christ, when he was on Calvary's cross, he cried out before he gave up the ghost. He said, it is accomplished. It is finished. God entered into his rest from his labor in creation. God entered into, Christ entered into his rest from his mission under the covenant of when he said, it is finished. Everything was to give us symbols and signs and shadows of what was going to be done or accomplished for us in Christ Jesus. Example of that in the creation story. That the seventh day was to be holy and set apart where man should not labor. Yes. But the thing is, is that if we've been laboring all this time <laughs> in the law of God, mm -hmm. doing our best to dot every I mm -hmm. and cross every T, mm -hmm. doing our best to satisfy what God demands, mm -hmm. if all of that was accomplished in Christ and Christ said it was finished, and Christ entered into his rest. If I'm now in Christ, should I still have to labor? I'll give you another example. Canaan. We've talked about him on the other side of the River Jordan. Cross over the River Jordan to the land of promise, that land flowing with milk and honey. And yes, that is a metaphor for it, but Probably it's more proper to look at Canaan as being a place of being in Christ on earth. It's being a place of being in Christ on earth. Why? Because in heaven, you ain't got no Jebusites and Hivites that you got to drive out. In heaven, you ain't dealing with temptations and pains and hurts. In heaven, you ain't dealing with your own fleshly lusts and desires. But in Canaan, what it truly represented for them was a rest from the wilderness. It was a rest from their wilderness. So they had been delivered out of Egypt. But now they're in the wilderness. Under the law. There was no rest for them. 
Every day they pick it up and take it their journey. Every day they're planting their tent, setting up the temple all over again. And every day they're taking it back down and getting ready to march on for the next day's journey. There was never any rest until they crossed over into the river, over the river Jordan into Canaan. Canaan represented being in Christ Jesus because in Christ we have blessings. In Christ we have mercy. In Christ we have the goodness of the land, the goodness of his love, the goodness of his justice and his righteousness. However, we still got to deal with self. However, we still got to deal with evilness. And we still got to deal with people. And we still got to deal with attacks. We still got to deal with struggle. And we still got to deal with hurt and suffering. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They had to deal with all that in Canaan. Yes, but they were still in God, in Christ. Mm -hmm. Beloved as believers. Because you got some believers that even though they're in Christ, they still don't have no rest. Yes. They still struggle with having any rest. And, and, and what I need you to understand is that as a believer, where your rest comes from is based on your faith. Your faith is based on what you trust. And your trust is based on what you believe. Yeah. It was a matter of belief. Yeah. It's a matter of believing. It, it, it says it in the text. For we which have believed. Yeah. Enter into rest. Yeah. If you don't believe. Then you won't trust. I heard, I heard what some of you saying. What are you saying? I, heard you. I, I believe in Jesus. I believe in believe he's got all power in his hands. And right, right, right. I believe he's all known. Uh -huh. Okay. Do you believe he'll heal you? Do you believe he'll care for your son or your daughter who didn't come home last night? <laughs> Do you believe that he who has begun a good work in you? Do you believe that? Okay, do you trust that? That even if you mess up, that even when you get it wrong, that God is still able to cover you? I need to know if you really believe that. Do you trust that? Because that's where true rest comes from. Beloved, for we which have believed, we enter into his rest. For the unbeliever, for the non-Christian, religious person that's trying to do all this other stuff to try to make it into heaven because you believe there is a heaven somewhere, there is a God somewhere, there is a hell somewhere, and I'm just, I want to make sure I don't go to the bad place. I come to tell you this morning that there is some good news. For Jesus also said, he said that my yoke yeah. is easy. Yeah. And, and my burdens are light. You, you don't have to go through this world with the heaviness and the burden of trying to get it all right. That's a heavy, heavy burden. So I plead with you today, listen to that Christian who tells you there is one who can take all your sins away. Listen to that one true gospel. Because that was the problem. 
He told us in verse 2. It was preached to them. And it was preached to us. But that sounds good. I, I, I want to be able to sleep well at night. Bill yeah, yeah, yeah. Logan, it's good to see you, Doc. I want to be able to not be laying awake at night worried about my children. I want to be in a place where I ain't got to worry about doing everything the right way. I want to be in a place where I don't have to live up to your expectations of what you think I should be. I, I want to be in a place where I can be free to be walkers all by myself. And free to be who I am everywhere I go without judgment or persecution. I need that liberty in my life. I, I, I want that rest. And, and what I come to tell somebody, if you want that rest, there is one. Because the question then uh, remains is, how then do I enter into this rest? How, how do I get there then? How can I get a little bit of this? It's a simple answer. Just believe. Yeah. Yeah. That's the answer. Yeah. Because when I look in the text, yeah. it does not say, keep the Ten Commandments. Oh. Does y'all Bible read like mine? Yeah. When I look in the text, it does not say, be in church every time the doors are open. Yeah. It does not say, speak in tongues. It does not say flip over pew. It does not say pray to the sun go down. It does not say you gotta dress a certain way and eat certain things. All it says is believe. That's all it says. That that's the only requirement. For they that confess with their mouth and believe in their heart. God so loved the world that whoever believe. That's all it takes. Is all you got to do is believe first. Believe in what? Believe in a man that came down forty and two generations. Believe in a man born of a virgin. Believe in a man that walked on water and raised the dead and healed the sick. And Open blind eyes, believe in a man that died on Calvary's cross. Believe in a man that raised on that third appointed morning. Believe in that man, and his name is Jesus. That's all you need to do. It starts right there. First, believe that, and know that that is enough to cover all of your mess. Sins of yesterday, yeah. sins of today, yeah. and sins of tomorrow. Yeah. That same blood yeah. shall never yeah. lose its power. Yeah. But it's just as efficient yeah. and just as sufficient yeah. 2,000 years ago yeah. as it is right now. Yeah. And the Lord all right. Yeah. Beloved, I need you to know that if you first believe that, yeah. there's a few other things yeah. that I need you to believe. To get you a little bit of rest right here on earth. Because when somebody asks, is there some rest for the weary? I need you to tell them that you answered the invitation when Christ said, Come on unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I came to Jesus just like I was. Yeah. Yeah. Shelter for the homeless, yeah. mother to the motherless. Yeah. 
some rest. And if Jesus, if Jesus already accomplished this rest, I'm just going to glory in his rest. If he's already done it all, I'm just going to lay in his rest. And I'm going to enjoy it right now. Right now. I can have peace right now. I can have rest right now. Why? Because I know who holds my tomorrow. All things are in his hands. He is. He rules. And he super rules. The whole world is in his hands. My enemies, they're in his hands. My health, they're in his hands. The doctors, the judges, the courtroom, it's all in his hands. So if I'm in him, why do I weary over what I can't control? When he's in control of all of it, ain't it good to be in the hands of a righteous God? Ain't it good to rest in the bosom of an all-powerful God? So I don't know about you, as you go through this life, worried about what's coming, worried about who's doing what, and where they going, and who they doing it with. Oh, 
what he's done for others. So we welcome you by letter or by Christian experience. Join us here where the feast of the Lord is going on.
know the works of prayer, we ought to be praying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, that's another reason why we don't worry. Even though our hearts go out and we feel people's pain and we feel the suffering, we don't worry. Why? Because we take everything to the Lord in prayer. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Take everything to the Lord. Take it all to Him. That's where we go. That's our relief. That's where we can pour out. That's where we can vent. See, some of y'all feel like you got to be all formal with God. I don't yeah. 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 Because I need him to replenish me. So you ain't done that. It's been a long time since the last time you done that. You just pour it out. But he will give you the relief that you need. I promise you. That thing that's bothering you so bad. When, when did you just... Have you done that yet? I promise you, if you do that, you'll feel better. We need to be praying. Continue to pray for our sick. Continue to pray for our shut in. Continue to pray for our seniors and our elderly. Continue to pray. Continue to pray for our church. Pray for our finances. is doing something. God is doing something. Bill Logan, how you doing? It's good to see you, man. to be what you have called us to be. 
Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the Father, the throne of grace. Rest, rule, and abide with these thy children. Henceforth now and forevermore, let all of God's people say, Amen. God bless you. God keep you. May his countenance continue to shine upon you. May the Lord.